Well, a warm welcome to all of you watching around the world by DVD, and a warm welcome to those of you who are in the classroom studying the spiritual gifts. And we are on session 33, which deals with the spiritual gift of healings. In the last session, we talked about the gift of helps. We talked about how it's a behind the scenes gift, rarely seen, rarely appreciated, yet it provides a vital service in the church for the people with the gifts of helps. They make sure that the tasks are taken care of that need to be done, often without being told to do them, and that those tasks, once done, free other people up to do ministry. And the gift of helps is a gift that we should give honor, credit, and praise to. In this session, we are going to talk about the gift of healings. It's a gift that's associated with the hands. It's also a gift that is among the controversial gifts in the body of Christ. Sometimes we call these the miraculous gifts. Other people call them the sign gifts, meaning they are a sign to unbelievers that God is in fact God. And there are those who think that these passed away years ago. There are others who think that they are for today. And there are others who say, maybe. Let's just watch and see. Well, there's no denying that healings are a big part of the Bible. Throughout the Old Testament, there are examples of people being healed. People who have disease being cured. And even people who have died being raised from the dead. For example, the prophet Elisha was staying with a, a woman, and a Shunammite woman, and she was promised by Elisha that in a year's time she would have a child. And she did. You can imagine how special this child was. Well, the child died. And when Elisha heard about it, he raced there and he laid himself across the body. And God, through the gift of healing, brought that child back to life and Elisha was able to restore that child to her mother. We see Jesus throughout uh, his time on earth performing uh, healings. Uh, we see him heal people of disease. Those who are crippled walk, for example. Those who have a disease uh, like leprosy, suddenly that's gone. But we see him also perform a miracle where people are raised from the dead. The, the most notable one, his very good friend Lazarus, the one who is the brother of Mary and Martha. But Jesus isn't the only one in the New Testament who we see performing healings. In the book of Acts, we see many, many examples and one where God works through Peter to raise a woman from the dead named Dorcas. So throughout the Bible, there are examples of healings, some of illnesses and diseases, others of more dramatic of raising from the dead. I know of such a case. It occurred to the wife of the pastor who led me to Christ. In fact, he was the same pastor who married my wife and I. So I am his spiritual son and he blessed our marriage and he is very, very important to me. His wife, Mieko, uh, has been a real uh, blessing to me as, as well. She helped me in the early days of my faith to find a place of ministry in the church. Well, I found out from her husband that Mieko had developed cancer. And by the time that they had located the tumor, she was already in stage four. Now, when you have cancer, there are five stages. When you get to the fifth stage, it's terminal. The chances of you dying are 100% and she was in stage four. And uh, you can imagine how this uh, upset them, how their life was thrown into a turmoil, and how upsetting it was to me as well. These people who have played such a big part of my life, and now this woman has cancer, and it's progressing to stage five, and she may very well die. One day, the pastor called me to tell me, you will not believe what happened. 
They said, what? The elders of the church went to Mieko's hospital room and they did what they should do in accordance with the book of James. They put oil on her head and they prayed for her healing. And when the doctor came and talked about her CAT scan, he said, I do not understand it, but the tumor is gone. Talk about rejoicing. Talk about an excitement that God, through the elders of that church, had performed a healing on Mieko. It was an incredible moment of sheer joy. And now, a year later, Mieko is still cancer-free. And they say if you, are, you have cancer and it goes away, it's in remission, if you can go five years without the cancer uh, reappearing, that you most likely will never see it again. And so we are all praying now that she will make it four more years. Well, let's look at the gifts of healing. If you'll open up your Bibles to 1 Corinthians 12, you know that before we have been in Romans chapter 12, and now we're moving to 1 Corinthians 12, two of the four passages where the spiritual gifts are talked about the most. We're going to go down to verse 9, and we're going to look at three verses that specifically mention the gifts of healings. So in verse 9, Paul says, To each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one through the Spirit is given the message of wisdom. To another, the message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by that one Spirit. Now my translation actually is wrong because both words are plural. You'll notice that it says, to another, gifts, with an S, gifts, more than one. And then in the Greek, it actually says, healings, more than one, plural. So there are more than one kinds of he healings. We talked about two healings. One had to do with the healing that took place uh, with the resurrection of the dead. We mentioned several of those. Others had to do with the cure of diseases and illnesses. And there are many other types that we will talk about. The important point is there isn't just one kind of healing. There are many kinds of healings. And the fact that both gifts and the fact that healings are in the plural indicate uh, that it is so. Notice that the word gifts is there. It is the word charisma that we've talked about before, which indicates an extraordinary power released by the Holy Spirit to perform something that you cannot do in your own human power. So it is a spiritual gift. Uh, when we go to verse 28, we'll see healings mentioned again. And in the church, God appointed, has appointed, first of all, apostles, second law prophets, third teachers, the workers of miracles, also those having gifts of Again, it should be healings. And then down to verse 30. Do all have the gifts of healings? Rhetorical question that no. It's mentioned three times in 1 Corinthians 12. And in fact, the same Greek word for healings is used in each of those three places. The gift of healings is only mentioned in 1 Corinthians 12. We know that the lists of the gifts are not identical, that the ones listed in Romans 12 are not the same ones listed necessarily in 1 Corinthians 12, and they are not the ones that necessarily are mentioned in Ephesians 4 or 1 Peter 4. They indicate that there are a variety of gifts and that Paul was not giving just one list so people would know this is in fact the only gifts that there are in the church. That's why we have so many different numbers of gifts that are mentioned by commentators. The word used for gifts, as we mentioned, is charisma, which is the English word charisma. Something special, out of the ordinary, that draws me to an individual. Uh, that is G 
5486, it is used here in the plural. And then the word for healings is iama, iama, G2386, and it is also plural. In Thayer's lexicon, it says that this word actually means healings, remedy, medicine, indicating physical healing. The root word for uh, the word iama is, it says that it means to cure, to make whole, to make whole, to restore to wholeness. Vine's Bible Dictionary says the words are used differently in the Old Testament and the New Testament. In the New Testament, it means not just healing the result, it is the act of healing, the actual action that takes place that brings the result of the healing. And he also mentions that it's in the plural. Here's the definition that we're going to use to restore to health and wholeness, to restore to health and wholeness. And we have mentioned there are different kinds of healings. There is physical healings, but there are also healings that deal with the mind, mental healings that deal with our feelings, emotional healings. There are healings that take place among people, relational healings, and then there are healings that take place in our relationship with God, spiritual healings. So physical, mental, emotional, relational, and spiritual would be the categories that we would talk about the different kinds of healings. What's the purpose? Well, the purpose would seem that it's to make that person well, and it is. But there's a larger purpose. It is to validate to unbelievers that God exists, that there is a God, that He is powerful, that He can defy the laws of nature to accomplish His will. While the gift may take place with believers, it is when unbelievers hear about the healing that it is a testimony to them about the power of God, and it is meant to bring them to salvation. So these gifts, both of healings and of miracles, are really a sign gift to the unbelievers that God is real, that God is powerful, and you can know Him personally, and you can know that power. The role of this gift clearly falls in the category of caring for the church. Someone is, Hill, is ill physically. Someone is hurt emotionally. Someone is dealing with thoughts that they cannot erase from their mind. Someone is struggling with a conflict with another person. Someone is struggling with their faith. A healing has to do with validating the purpose that God is real and it has to do with caring for the body of Christ. So the gift mix that's included typically and most often is intercession. And doesn't that make sense that if a healing is going to take place, prayer would be involved? Almost every time there's a mention of prayer. In fact, in some healings, it is a different degree of difficulty to actually heal the person. There is one point where Jesus sends the apostles out to minister, and they come back and they say, Lord, there's this one case we were not able to heal this person. Kind of, what gives? How come we couldn't? And Jesus said it's because this type of healing requires prayer. And healings do require prayer. Some require intense prayer. TVS Seminary is a great way to invest in the kingdom of God please consider making a donation to support this effective educational and outreach ministry today. We exist upon your gracious giving. Please donate to support TVS Project's continuation and growth. For more information, visit tvsseminary.com. Other gifts that are usually in the cluster of gifts associated with healing include mercy, which makes sense, and miracles, 
also makes sense. And then finally, and most importantly, faith. For the healing only takes place if there is faith expressed through prayer to accomplish God's will. Have you ever thought about the fact that Jesus walked on earth, healed many people, but he didn't heal everyone? That Jesus could have walked around and said, be healed, away from you, be restored to health, and everybody would be healed. Why is it that Jesus healed some, but not others? And the answer is, we don't know. But what we do know is that God has a plan for each person. And while we are on earth, we will not understand the full dimensions of that plan. It may very well be that a healing takes place, and that was God's plan for Mieko, and that people hear that and they respond to the gospel. But it could have just as easily have been Mieko dies of cancer. And then there may have been larger purposes for it that we do not understand. That perhaps my friend the pastor would be freed up to do other ministry. For when you are single as I am, you are not tied to a relationship where you must consider the other person. Instead, you're free to go wherever God calls you, whenever God calls you. We just don't know. But I suspect that when we get to heaven and when we hear the reasons, we will celebrate God's goodness. I went to the commentators to look what do Bible experts say about the gifts of healing. And those who talk about the fact that there is a gift say the following, Chuck Smith. Now, it doesn't seem consistent to me that if all throughout biblical history, in both the Old Testament and the New Testament, God healed sicknesses in answer to believing prayer, why would God suddenly stop healing the sick today? I think that's a very good question. Isn't God a good God? Doesn't He love us? What, did He love the people in the times before the Bible was written, but not now? Did He care for those people then? but somehow lost his care and concern now? I think those are ridiculous questions. And I agree with Chuck Smith. There are all these examples of healings throughout the Bible. Why would we get to New Testament times and then suddenly God go, okay, that's it, no more healings? I don't think that's true. In ministry tools, it uses the following definition, healings, are to be used of God as a means through which He makes people whole, either physically, emotionally, mentally, or spiritually. Interesting enough to me, he doesn't include relationally, but it is one of the five dimensions of being human. We have the mind, we have the heart, we have uh, the body, we have relationships, and we have the spirit. Those are the five dimensions. I think God heals in all those dimensions. I think it was just an oversight on their part. The visual aid that I would like you to think about is an empty hospital bed where the sheets are obviously rumpled. They're kind of messed up, indicating somebody was in the bed, but they're not there now. That's the picture I want you to have, that Mieko was in that bed. And then she drew the sheets back and she got out of the bed, completely healed of the tumor that threatened her life. The biblical example that we're going to use is in the book of Acts. So if you would turn to Acts chapter 9, and we're going to go to just a few verses, verse 32 to verse 35, we'll see an example of Peter healing a person who is paralyzed. All right, they're what we call a paralytic. All right, let's look down at verse 
32. As Peter traveled about the country, he went to visit the saints in Lydda. There he found a man named Aeneas, a paralytic who had been bedridden for eight years. Aeneas, Peter said, Jesus Christ heals you. Get up and take care of your mat. Immediately, Aeneas got up and all those who lived in Lydda and Sharon saw him and turned to the Lord. A dramatic healing by the Apostle Peter. How did Peter know that that man could be healed? I mean, did he just walk through it and say, okay, that guy, let's heal him, but not, but not him. He kind of looks like a really nice guy. He looks a little mean. He's dressed well, but he's dressed poor. I don't think so. I think he heard the whisper of God in his mind, in his heart, in his spirit that says, Peter, heal that man. It is never by our own command that we go to heal people. It is only by the will of God. Only God can initiate the plan to heal someone. Why? Because only God knows the plans for each person's life. And only God has the power to, in a miraculous way, bring healing and wholeness to someone. So I think as Peter's walking through this town, he sees this man who's paralyzed, and it says bedridden for eight years, and in his spirit he hears, Peter, that guy, that guy right there, heal him. And without any sort of fanfare, any sort of introduction, he, Peter just says to him, Jesus heals you. That's pretty dramatic. Jesus heals you. Get up. Take care of your mat. And immediately the man gets up and he's healed. And then what happens? It says the people in that town and the neighboring town saw him. They knew who he was. They knew he was a paralytic. And then they turned to the Lord. You see, once again, this gift of healing isn't for us. It isn't for those who are already convinced that there's a God, that Jesus is His Son, and that through Christ, in our personal relationship, we can be saved. We're already the believers. It's for the people who don't know God, who are unaware of who God is, who don't believe Him. They see this miraculous healing of someone they've known for years, and they are immediately aware something special, extraordinary, supernatural has taken place that defies the laws of nature. There is no way by the laws of nature Peter should just simply say, Jesus Christ heals you and the man is healed. It just doesn't work that way in real life. So how, can, how could you attribute the healing? What do you contribute it to? Obviously to God and His power. And it is always a witness to those who are unbelievers. Now why do we not see healings taking place like all over the place? In my country, in your country, in many of the uh, countries that you represent where we're industrialized, where we have uh, a full-fledged economy that supports our nation, we don't see too many healings. I don't know about you, but I don't hear too many dramatic stories about someone who is dying and is healed. I think it's because people in those types of countries have had plenty of opportunities to hear the message, to hear the gospel, and yet they've chosen not to respond. I think where you see the healings and you hear of them most dramatically are out on the mission field, are on the frontier where people don't have the advantages that we do. To, they don't have Bibles. They don't have books. They don't have seminars. They don't have classes to come to. They don't know what we know about God. Therefore, a dramatic healing will speak to them in a way 
that for us, we may very well try to find an explanation that isn't attributed to God. Some people could look at the healing of Mieko and said, come on, she had a lot of treatment beforehand. She had radiation and chemotherapy and bed rest, and it just finally took place, and she was healed. Those of us who know God know differently. It was a healing that was instantaneous, complete, total, restoring her to wholeness. And I think in that case, it was a blessing to a community of believers and a witness to people outside of the community of faith. But where they really need to see the healings is right on the very edge of where the gospel's being proclaimed, in those very dark countries where they have not heard the good news. They have not been exposed to it uh, like we have. I will give you an example of personal healing. When my wife died, you can imagine how shattering an experience that was, not to mention all of the other deaths that took place in my family. I was overwhelmed with grief. I sometimes didn't know which way was up. I didn't know if I really even wanted to go on living. Uh, I didn't know if I believed in God anymore. And I went through this period of time for about three years. But during that time, God graciously led me to a woman named Joanne, who is a Christian counselor, whom I had been to previously in other situations. And she helped me walk the path that restored me to wholeness. She listened to my story. She reminded me of the goodness of God. She reminded me of times that God had done amazing things in my life. She reminded me that God still had a purpose for my life. I might not be able to see on earth why this took place. And certainly on earth, between my wife's death and the time I die, I will miss her tremendously. But what she allowed me to see and to finally understand is, despite the fact that my wife died, I still had a life. And I had the time between when she died and when I died that I could devote myself to making a difference for Jesus Christ. And that in many ways, this gave me the luxury of going wherever God chose for me to go. And that's why I'm here with you today. I believe if my wife was still alive, I'd still be in Chicago. God had a different plan for me. I don't necessarily like the plan, but I do believe that it is God's plan. Once again, I have some questions for you. Please take these questions and answer them personally, both here in the classroom, those of you watching by DVD, and decide, have you seen God work through you this way? Or is it a way that you could envision or that you desire God to work through you? And remember, healing isn't just physical, the dramatic. It's the mental, it's the emotional, it's the relational, it's the spiritual healing as well. Question number one, has God worked you, through you to, number one, restore the health of others in a way you can't explain? Number two, has God worked through you to set people free from their physical, mental, emotional, relational, or spiritual bonds? Their uh, handcuffs that are keeping them back. And third, has God worked through you to see believers accept Christ after a healing has taken place. Do any of those apply to you? If they do, perhaps you have the gift of healing. And if so, begin to talk with others who know you well. Ask them about this gift of healing. Uh, and see what they have to say, those who know you well and love you despite what they know about you. Join us next time as we'll continue with these a gift that is of the uh, miraculous sign version, the gift of miracles. Thank you 
and please come back.